Hey folks, Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I want to show you one of the biggest problems I see with people's songs in reason when I'm doing coaching sessions or song reviews. And this is that you turn on the bus compressor way too early in the process, choke your mix, and you can never get that dynamism back. You twist your ear into thinking that that's the right sound and basically just collapse your mix. So in this video, I'm going to teach you how to avoid doing it. Let's look. So here's the master bus compressor, right? Over on the right. There's a big blue knot or button here that says on or off. You leave it off. Problem solved. There you go. You just don't turn it on until you're mixing. But let's talk about why in a second. Before we do that, though, I do want to let you know that I have a free reason mixing template you can download at the link below that will help you get much better mixes um, it's got a lot of presets that'll help you just speed up the process and make things that sound better so let's talk about why this is a problem and how to set up the settings on your mix bus compressor so that it sounds beautiful the reason this becomes a problem is essentially when you set your compressor you're looking to dial in an ideal amount of compression on a master bus compressor that's maybe one to three db let's say two to be uh you know fair most of the time which is a subtle amount of compression but if you turn your compressor on early in the mix what's going to happen is that let's say you've written the bass and the drum line right and then you turn it on dial it back a little bit there you go you've got the perfect compressor settings and it's sounding great. Um, you're doing two, two-ish dB of compression. Your ratio is set at four. Your attack should be set at 30 at all times when using the master bus compression. And in my view, um, you should be either doing the 0.1 second or 0.3 second compressor release. At the end of the video, we'll actually take a listen to these compressor settings so you can actually hear how they sound different. Um, and I'll kind of teach you how to hear compression, uh, but uh, as a rule of thumb, just stick to basically, this is the only thing you're going to adjust, this and the threshold uh, between 0.1 and 0.3, and that's going to be based on taste. And you can leave your makeup at, you know, two and a half or something. Two, you're basically trying to do 2 dB of gain reduction using the threshold knob, and you're going to make up for it with the makeup knob. Uh, and a ratio of four always seems to work. So we've got the bass and the drums now driving the compressor, and it's doing two and a half db of compression more or less um and then we're like oh well i want to add a chord part to this so let's mess around and add some chords and then we'll add some chords Before you know it, you're doing about 4 dB of compression. And this is not an extreme case. Often when I see people's videos, it could be, or I mean, people's songs and I'm reviewing them, you know, it could be you're at 5 or 6 dB of compression because you set your compressor threshold when you didn't have all the sounds in your mix. So let's just listen to what this would sound like with, let's say, 6 dB-ish of compression. <laughs> So it sounds way better off than with 6 dBs of compression, but if you listen to it with 6 dBs of compression on for, you know, hours on end as you're producing and slowly adding more instruments and taking away that dynamic range, you might trick your ear into thinking that that's the way the song's supposed to sound. And it doesn't. It loses all of its punch. It loses so much of its groove. Um, and this assumes you have the right compressor settings on even. Uh, but let's say you have the wrong compressor settings on and you're doing this, you might think your song is terrible when in fact the problem is that you just are compressing the life out of it. So I know people, a lot of people say they have trouble hearing compression. I'm gonna give you a real quick tutorial about what that sounds like. We're gonna crank up the amount of compression just so we can hear what bad compressor settings do. So we'll also add a little bit of makeup gains just so it sounds consistent. So now we're using a 10 to one ratio, meaning that every time 
it gets too loud, it crosses the threshold, it turns the, the compressor turns the signal down by 10 dB. The attack is how quickly it does it. So when you've got an attack of 30 seconds, or 30 milliseconds, um, basically it waits 30 milliseconds until it turns it down by 10 dB per decibel over the threshold. When you've got it at the lowest setting, 0.1 milliseconds, basically instantly. And that means that you're gonna take away all the punch using the compressor. Every time the kick hits, nope, you don't get to hear it hit. You get to hear the tail of the kick. Um, and it's often in most music like this, dance music, hip hop, anything, the kick drum that's gonna be driving the bus compressor. So essentially you lose all of that punch from the kick by using a fast attack time and compressing too much. Let's listen just to the difference between 0.1 milliseconds over compressed and 30 milliseconds. <laughs> So even at way too much compression, 30 milliseconds still sounds good. If you have your settings wrong and you're over compressing with the wrong settings because you turned this on too early, you are thinking your song is garbage. You're going to think you don't know how to produce. Maybe you've got the wrong sounds. Uh, you know, oh, maybe I need to program my drums differently. But no, the issue is just you've turned your compressor on too early with the wrong settings. Similarly, let's listen now to the release settings. So we'll start with um, a fast release and then we'll go to the slowest release. The way you can think of it is the attack is kind of like a swell. So with a really fast attack, basically it just, the compressor kicks right on. With a slow attack, it kind of swells in. So the initial hit makes it through. So it's sort of like a whoop, whoop, whoop sound with a slow attack. With a fast release, that's when the compressor turns off and lets the original sound restore to its normal volume. So a fast release is gonna be like, but, 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 because the tail comes back really quick. Or actually, I guess the better way of describing it with a fully long sound would be, buh, 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 buh. But with a slow release, it's gonna take time for that volume to come back. So it would be, buh, bum, uh, and it'll sort of have this pumping effect on the end as the volume comes back up. I know that's a terrible sounding example, but hopefully that kind of illustrates what we're about to hear as we go from the fastest release setting to the slowest release setting. And generally, for most types of music on a master bus compressor, it's gonna be either 0.1 second or 0.3 seconds. Those tend to get the best results because it's transparent and it enhances the groove of the track, which is, I think, one of the main things you wanna do with a master bus compressor compressor and you really don't want to kill the groove with it. So let's listen. There's no, There's no groove once you go all the way to point three. But we'll go back or what is this? One point two seconds. Um and We'll go back and forth one more time between this, and then we'll do the worst setting possible, fast attack, slow release. Turns out your song wasn't bad, you just put the compressor on too soon and dialed in settings before you knew what your song sounded like. Please don't do this. Uh, I guarantee you, your songs will end up sounding better throughout the whole mixing process. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't hesitate to join that or to download that free mixing template for reason. I think it'll really help you in other ways improve your mix. And be sure to check out this next video because I think it's going to help a lot.